So the question is, vibrating source on a ship produce sound waves that travel through the ocean. The wave produced is longitudinal. What is uh, meant by the term longitudinal? The term longitudinal means particle vibrate parallel to direction of wave and it is included uh, compression and rarefaction. Because it's of three mark, one mark is for mentioning the vibration of the particle, the term vibration, and the other one is for mentioning they are parallel to direction of the wave or in the direction of wave, and the other one is for mentioning rarefaction and compression. So when direction of vibration is parallel to direction of wave, that's that will give two. And the third mark is for mentioning compression and rarefaction. If it was a two mark definition, then just write uh, uh, the direction of a particle is parallel to direction of wave. The frequency of a sound wave is 800 Hertz. The speed of the sound in air is 330. What is the typical value of speed of sound in liquid? So that's equal 1500 meter per second. Using your value, calculate the wavelength of a sound wave in ocean. So we have formula speed is frequency multiplied by wavelength. So what we need, we need the wavelength speed is 1500 and the frequency is 800. What is the wavelength? 1500 divided by 800. 1.88 when you write answer, write in three significant figure. That's why 1.875 rounded off to 1.88 meters. The next part, figure 9.1 shows a symbol of a 12 volt battery. So we have a 12 volt battery. Two lamps are connected in parallel on the figure using a correct symbol, complete a circuit diagram. Uh, so you can use a screen annotation, but you can also use the other space because if everyone try to draw on the same one, it will overlap. You can use your own space, any other side of this screen. With the correct circuit symbol for the lamp. So as we know, it's a 12 volt supply, so they are parallel, so each will receive 12 volts. In the question, no need to write this 12, just for explanation, I'm writing this 12. On these lamps, uh, one of these lamps have a resistance of 6 ohm. Calculate the current. So how to calculate a current? V is equals to IR or I is equals to V over R. You can use the chat to mention the answer for this. So it will be resistance divided by uh, voltage divided by resistance that's equal to 2 ampere. So that's the current is 2 ampere. The power, how to work out the power of the lamp? So P is equals to VI. P is VI, so voltage multiplied by current, voltage is 12, and the current is 2, so 12 multiplied by 2, that will make us uh, make the answer 24 watts. The power of other lamp is 36 watts. Calculate the total energy delivered to this lamp in 20 hours. So in power is energy divided by time, so energy is power multiplied by time. Our work done is equals to 
power multiplied by time. So power of this lamp is 36, but the time should be in seconds. So we have 20 hours, we have to convert into second. So 20 hour multiply by 72,000 when you convert into first into uh, 20 multiplied by 60 that will convert into minutes and then minutes into second so further multiplied by 60 so 20 into 60 into 60 the final answer is 2.6 exponent 6 joules Figure shows a transformer. Transformer consists of a coil of wire wound on a metal core. Figure 10.1 represent the transformer. State the name of a metal for which the core is made up of. So the metal, we call that as a soft iron core. The meaning why we call it is soft because it is easy to magnetize and demagnetize. And the metal from which it is made up of that is iron. The primary coil of a transformer is connected to output voltage of AC generator. So there's AC generator connected here, which supplies alternating current. Explain why there's a voltage between the two terminals of a secondary, why there will be a voltage here. So basically writing a soft is not important. You, because in the question, they just ask state the metal. So metal is iron. Soft is optional. Like, so even you write soft, that is not wrong. So alternating current produce a change in the magnetic field, which magnetize the iron core and change in the magnet, change in magnetic field of iron core induce EMF in the secondary. So the working of the transformer, first an alternating current produce change in a variable magnetic field. So alternating or AC in the primary. Transformer cannot work with DC, uh, so it should be AC. So AC in the primary produce if there's a DC it will produce magnetic field but that will be constant magnetic field that's why it is important to write an AC in the primary alternating current so AC in the primary produce variable magnetic field which yes in exam you can write I thought you are asking about the first part in exam instead of writing alternating current you can write AC Instead of writing full direct current, you can write DC. So AC in the primary produce variable magnetic field, which magnetize soft iron core and change in the magnetic field. Iron core produce voltage in the secondary coil. And which can be step up or step down using a suitable turn ratio. The generator, uh, there are 560 turns in the primary and 910 turns in the secondary, the voltage between the two terminal of the secondary is 78. So this number of turns of primary that is NP is equals to 560. Number of turns of secondary NS that is 910. Voltage of the secondary is 78. Voltage of the primary we don't know. So we have the formula Vs over Vp is equals to Ns over Np. Or if you want to memorize in this way, Np over Vp is equals to Ns over N, 
uh, vs that's also both ways it is right so it is taking 48 volts and converting into 78 which transformer is this step up or step down which transformer is this step up or step down so because it is increasing the voltage so it's a step up transformer the next part the transformer are used to increase the voltage in electrical energy transmitted in cable across a long distance explain why the power losses in the cable are lower when the voltage is high so basically what happened because transformer is a device and for device the power is same power is constant so what power it will take in the same if it is 100 percent efficient the same amount of power it will transfer so if we supply a hundred watt it will supply a hundred watt output but power is a product of voltage and current so when we use a step up transformer we increase the voltage so the current should reduce to get the same power as the current in the transmission line reduce the heat loss will be lower so increasing the voltage reduces the current which reduce the power loss in the form of heat The next part, question 11, figure 11.1 uh, shows a data of nine elements. Carbon 14 is a radioactive isotope. Radioactive isotope means it emit out radiation such as alpha, beta and gamma. It, and it, it decay by emitting beta particles. Use any data you need from figure 11.1. Write down a nucleide notation for this decay. So what will be the equation when carbon 14 is decaying into another uh, is emitting out radiation by emitting a beta particle? What will be the equation and the nucleide notation for this? You can use the screen annotation to complete this. Uh, you can use any space, it's not necessary. So basically what happened? You have carbon, which is 14 and atomic number of carbon is 6. So carbon 14 is a radioactive, this number should be 6 because carbon atomic number is 6 here. What happened? It is emitting out beta particle. So when it is emitting out beta particle, what happened in a beta decay? What happened in a beta emission? When it emit out beta particle, atomic mass will remain same. There are some, because of uh, different ratio of neutron to proton, some of the elements, even though they have atomic number less than 82, they are also radioactive. Most naturally occurring element above 82 are radioactive, but exceptions are there. These are some exceptions like carbon 14 is there as an exception. Cobalt is there. That's also exception. So there are exceptions. So you have carbon, which is emitting out beta particles. So if it is emitting out beta particle, the mass when it emit out beta particle does not change. So it remains same. So if it is 14 the mass or nuclear number will remain 14 but what happened to atomic number atomic number increases by one so as the atomic number increases by one which element is having atomic number seven so that is nitrogen that's why will complete by symbol of nitrogen 
Is it clear? Then the next part, a radioactive sample is placed close to detector. Radioactive isotopes in a sample has a long half-life. Long half-life means uh, they remain radioactive or they start to emit, they emit out radiation for a longer period of a time. The detector record a count rate of 597 counts. Figure 11.1 .1 shows count rate means uh, number of radiations detected by the detector. That's called a count rate. How many radiation a detector is recording? That's we call a count rate. Normally a detector which we use for these radioactive radiation, that's called a GM tube, a Giger Miller tube named after one physicist, German physicist. So these radiations emitted out from the source, a GM tube record that. So every second, how many radiations a GM tube is recording? 597 radiations per second or giving up 597 counts per second. So in the question, they're asking, explain whether an alpha particle, beta particle or gamma rays are emitted from radioactive sample. As we know, when we place a sheet or paper, for example, when we place a paper, the counts are still 602. So there is no change in the count. Um, like considerable change in there's no considerable change in the count so it means there is no alpha and why there is no alpha because there is no considerable change in the count when we place a paper then we place aluminium aluminium sheet is placed again it's 598 count so it's not a considerable change so it means that because alpha particle uh, so a beta particle can be stopped by aluminium so there's no beta as well and what about gamma so when we place a lead 510 so the count reduce considerable so it means the gamma is there because the gamma radiation can be stopped by But here we use a thin lead, that's why a small amount is ready, stopped. Is it clear? This question, the alpha particles, why there were alpha particle uh, were not there, why there was no beta particle? Because beta can be stopped by So beta particles can easily be stopped by aluminium and gamma is there because slowed by or reduced by thin lead. 